another day, another dollar. Another year, another brush pack. What's up, guys? It's Wes. <laughs> There's a new brush pack out. It's the Wes Gardner's 2024 brush pack. Uh, in this video, we're just going to talk about it. We're going to show a painting using it. We're going to just talk about the brush pack and talk about just brushes in general. Um, this, uh, this comes up quite often in places like Discord and just online. Um, people asking if brushes are important, you know, if the artists, you know, make the brushes or if the brushes make the artists, that type of thing. Uh, kind of the chicken and the egg, as it were. Uh, for your style or whatever. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. But really, I just wanted to showcase uh, what these are, talk a little bit about making these brushes, and just showing a cool painting of a forest that we uh, recorded using these brushes to kind of show it off. So yeah, let's get started. Yo, so yeah, Wes Brush Pack uh, 2024 is here. So for those that don't know, I have made brush packs and brushes since uh, 2020, I believe. I did a kind of a May sketch a day brush pack and then uh, kind of did an annual brush pack since then. Uh, they each contain at least 30 brushes. Uh, it comes with like a little tutorial on how to use them. Um, it comes with other little resources and stuff. So it's a decent little package. And all of this can be yours for $4. <laughs> so it's actually a goal of mine to make sure that all of my brush packs and all of my resources are uh, affordable. Because I think the whole idea of digital art is its, its ability to bring more people to art in general. And just the creative process. And you don't need to have a lot of space, you know, with like traditional art. Sometimes if you're going into oils or acrylics or whatever, you have to have some dedicated area. Um, maybe you don't want to paint on your kitchen table, rightfully so, just because, you know, oil paint and wood don't really mix all that well. <laughs> um, ask me from experience. But uh, anyway, back to the point, the, the digital art stuff is you're able to do it in more places. You're able to do it with less room being taken up. It's more accessible. A lot of people have a smartphone. Smartphones even nowadays have little digital art programs. You know, just more people are able to do it and that that's something that I care about a very very great deal so going forward um, I wanted to make sure that everybody that wanted to kind of dig in and dive in um, could have professional grade stuff uh, easily accessible and readily available and that's what my online shop is so uh, I do these free YouTube videos. I will always do the YouTube stuff for sure. And I do have the premium stuff as well. So if you do want to support, feel free. Um, hey, if not, I got free brushes too. You don't even have to spend any money uh, to get some cool brushes. So uh, yeah, I wanted to do a painting that felt very traditional. And you you notice if you've been a fan of the channel for the past year or two, you you know that I'm kind of going towards this direction. So I'm an illustrator by trade. But I just love traditional art. I love oil painting and acrylic painting and stuff like that. So it's always been my goal to bridge that gap. And with the 2024 brush pack, that was number one on my mind. Um, so the previous ones have also had some very cool like painterly canvas, you know, mixer, oil, that type of stuff. But it also had some what I consider like illustrative stuff. So stuff for rendering, a little more digital paint texture, um, stuff you would think of whenever you think of like Photoshop or, you know, Krita or Rebel or Art Rage, like that sort of feel. But this brush pack is, is a little different because I think the learning curve is a little higher with this one. Um, this brush pack, out of all of the ones I made, in my opinion, has the most exciting results. Like, while I'm painting, it still surprises me. And the reason for this is I, I have a little bit of variance in every brush stroke. So normally, you know, with, with digital art, there's this thing of, like, consistency. And that's totally true. I mean, why does McDonald's sell a bazillion hamburgers a year 
is because they're consistent. You know exactly what you're getting every time you order a McDonald's burger. They got it down to a science. And digital painting programs are kind of the same way. Since these are just lines of code, they replicate pretty exactly. And that's a blessing because you know exactly what you're going to get. But sometimes, if you're looking for the more spontaneous, traditional feel, it can sometimes be a curse as well. Because you have to work harder, in my opinion, on digital art to make it look traditional. Does that make sense? Um, <laughs> so, so you're actually like fighting an uphill battle. And with these brushes, with the 2024 brush pack, it... it feels spontaneous enough that I get more excited to paint because I don't know what's going to happen. I do, but I don't. So the variants, um, you can change all of this stuff in the brush settings, uh, especially in Photoshop. These are native Photoshop brushes, but you can import them into things like Procreate, into Clip Studio Paint, and they should work pretty one-to-one -one. i i tried very very hard that's actually why it's you know the middle of february and now the brush pack is coming out i wanted to open it and import it into various painting programs that allow for dot abr files and really test them and i'm happy to say that this is probably the closest i've gotten to one-to-one -one, no matter what you're importing the abr brushes into so if the program can take photoshop brushes it should take these pretty well um, there's only a few, and just because of the way that the mixer brush engine on Photoshop works, um, it's basically a wet blend engine, um, and it also takes a, a, a stamp, a pattern of a texture instead of a color. So not every paint program can do that, but um, I, I set it up in such a way to where one of the things that transfers over is actually that wet blend feel uh, should still feel pretty good whenever you import it into another. But anyway, um, these are more spontaneous. I tweaked things such as size jitter, color jitter, hue jitter, saturation, and, uh, and brightness. So every time you lay down a paint stroke, the shape's going to be slightly different. The angle's going to be the same. It's going to follow your brush tip. But then also, there's going to be subtle differences, just the same way that, let's say, you're mixing colors with acrylic for an underpainting. Um, and you have to stop for the day. You know, you have to stop your underpainting, and then you come back the next day, your paint kind of dried out. You're like, oh man, so I have to remix my paint. You know, unless you've done it for years and years, you're going to have a slight variance in the temperature and the value. And a lot of people think that, you know, oh, it needs to be exactly the same again to make the painting look good. But I would argue the painting looks more interesting and more deep and enriched if you have subtle differences with those colors and those values, just because there's more to look at, the eye has more to kind of feast upon. I know it sounds weird, but like whenever you look at a painting, you know you're looking at a skilled, good painting when there's a lot to look at. You can look at the main shapes, you can look at the lighting, you can look at that, but then the real tell in my opinion, and this this goes for me too, anytime I visit an art museum, I notice that my favorite paintings are the ones that I want to go and look at up close. Like, how did they do that? Like, you go up and you look and you're like, oh, wow, look at all these little tiny, you know, not necessarily details, but like, that's why I wanted to paint a forest here, is because you can actually get away with a lot of subtle color variances, because that's how nature is. Not every you know, leaf is going to be the same color. Not every blade of grass is the same color green. The different soil, the different way the the land falls and the sun hits it, changes how much light, you know. It's a very scientific thing, but with painting, we get to abstract that and we get to take it and we get to make it something that looks beautiful that you can look at very quickly, very easily and get a full kind of enriched story from it. So that was the goal. That was the entire goal of every brush in this brush pack. Um, yeah, I I mean, I'm biased, of course, because I made it, but I like it. I, I think I dig it. I think it's fun. It's fun to use. Like I said, it gives me that same type of excitement that I have whenever I'm getting out the traditional art supplies. 
like, oh, what's today going to be like? Is it going to be a rough day on the canvas? Is it going to be a good? Like these brushes give me that sort of momentum and that feel. And I appreciate that a lot. You know, that that goes a long way. Um, and that kind of leads us into the, I guess, the main topic of this one. So, yeah, the first part of this video is a little shilly. Sorry about that. But, you know, got three kids and a house and all that. So got to make things happen. You know what I'm saying? But let's talk about kind of the crux of all of this. Do brushes matter? Do they matter? You know, technically, at the end of the day, if you have a hard round, a soft round, maybe like a chalk brush, and maybe a blender of some sort. You can make any painting that's ever existed. Given enough time, on a long enough timeline, you know, you put 30 monkeys in a room with typewriters, they're gonna make Shakespeare at some point. It's that whole infinite parallel universe theory that everything can happen. So, you know, given enough time and on the right timeline, you can make whatever type of painting with whatever type of texture, with whatever, with only like three or four brushes. That's true. But is it worth the time investment? That's where we start getting, you know, into the weeds as far as the philosophical stuff. So do you need brushes? No, you don't. You need a few and that's it. But the reason, in my opinion, brushes are important is it keeps it fun and it keeps it interesting. And anything that keeps you interested in making art and painting is a net positive. Anything that keeps you trying again and again, that keeps you tweaking things, whether it's settings or colors or whatever, that's part of it. And the more you're doing that, the more you're learning. And, you know, cowboys call it saddle time, time in the saddle. Tattoo artists call it time under the gun. We've talked about it time and time again. The more you do the thing, the better you get at the thing. And if brushes are part of the equation, if you like going and getting your favorite artists brushes or like going and getting some free packs online or, you know, tweaking brushes that already exist to see what happens. If that is part of your journey and part of the joy, go for it because that's also part of your style. The discovery process of finding out what works the best for you is a very empowering thing because you get to speak from experience. Not only get to, do you get to use the brushes that you really like, you also get to use some brushes you really hate. <laughs> Whenever you're going through some of these brushes, I mean, some of these, and to be fair, some of these, like I said, this learning curve is a little higher. On the 2024 brush pack, um, I, I I went less on the side of make them as easy to use as possible and went on more of the side of make them as useful as possible. So it's going to take a minute. And even with me, I, I still get, and I've used these brushes for about four and a half months now, four to five months. Um, primarily when I do a brush pack, it comes out in December before the next year starts. So like the last week of December, in 2022 is when I released my 2023 brush pack and that's it for the whole year. I just do one brush pack a year now because I want to spend months fine tuning, making them different enough that that way, even if you bought every single one of my brush packs, you get different brushes. There are a few repeats, but they have been tweaked. They've been modified in a way based on how I work that you're getting something different every time. And that's really important to me as well. Um, I don't want you to feel like you waste money or anything like that. I also want you to get your money's worth. So having, you know, 30 plus brushes over the course of however many years, you know, I want you to have a few hundred brushes for less than, you know, I think if I have, you know, four packs and they're four bucks a pop, you know, for less than 25 bucks after tax, you have hundreds of brushes to choose from. And that's important to me. And it's important, literally, it's important to me for you, but it's important to me for me because <laughs> I need to use these brushes. Like I, I will sometimes go back and use my 2020 brushes or 2022 or whatever. 
And that's, you know, that's important to me. I want stuff that stands the test of time and good brushes. You're going to hear this from like oil painters um, and, you know, traditional painters and, you know, pastel artists and stuff. The materials matter, man. You know, if you're just learning the ropes, if you're just getting started, don't worry about it. Don't worry about the materials. Just get what you can afford, experiment, play around. And through trial and error, you're going to find out what you need, what you're good at, what you find useful. And you go from there. And you're like, oh, I like paint that I can do kind of in one sitting, more of the a la prima, you know, wet into wet style blending. So maybe I need to find a good medium. Maybe I need to find, you know, an oil painting like I recommend Liquin. Liquin's great. It's fantastic. It lets the paint uh, start drying, touch drying a little faster. Um, with acrylic paint, I have Open Medium by Golden. That stuff is magic. I mean, it is incredible. Like, it literally makes my acrylic painting feel like oil painting. It's The stuff's awesome, right? And it adds for that wet into wet blending. And so maybe with digital brushes, you find out that you really love the mixer brushes. They work that same way. It's a nice medium. You can get texture into texture and wet into wet. And the, the edges are nice and soft. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, it's a great place to be. And then you can kind of go over those with some harder edges to make your shapes. Just really interesting, very painterly way of going about it. So yeah, that that's really what it comes down to is brushes. In my opinion, brushes are very important. Not because they make you a better artist or they make your art better, but because they're more fun, that it keeps things interesting. You can surprise yourself. You can part of the joy of this whole like painting art journey. One is self-improvement, but two, it's surprising yourself and you're going to do that for a lifetime. It's one of those things, man, that you're going to get. To a point, there, there's a that famous graph that shows your artistic eye and then your artistic ability. And whenever your artistic eye, whenever your ability to see things is better than your ability, you think you're not very good at painting. You're like, man, I'll never get that good. Man, oh, I'm terrible. I've, I haven't painted this bad in years. But then as you start practicing and you're in your program or you're on your canvas, and you start improving and you start putting in that time, your ability is going to start matching your eye. And then that's when, then you're going to get to that nice threshold where you break through and your ability is better than your ability to see as far as artistic, you know, composition and stuff like that's concerned. And you're going to be like, I don't know how I did this, man. This is the best thing I ever made. This is top tier stuff. I need to show this to everybody, man. I'm going to print it out, put it on the fridge. You know, mom's going to be real proud. <laughs> you know, it, it's that mentality. Like, look at that. That is the best thing I've ever made, man. I am on the up and up. I'm going to go pro tomorrow. And then because your ability's better, now your eye has to improve. Now you're going to notice different things and like master paintings and stuff like that. And you're going to be like, oh, well, look at this. Look at this. And you're going to come back and look at that painting that you're super proud of and be like, well, you know, I mean, it's good, but I could probably fix this. I could probably tweak that. I could probably, and now the, that cycle repeats again. Now your eye is being trained and then you're going to be like, man, I don't know what's happened, but I got worse at painting <laughs> and it's not true. You're getting better and better and better. But part of that process is finding out your method. Whenever you stop worrying about all the, nuances of technicality once you pick up your favorite brush and you know exactly what it's going to do even if it's something random but you're you're anticipating that randomness and you kind of empowered by it you're you are in control of it that's where the magic is because now you're out of your own way now you can just create you can get in there you can make stuff you can push paint around and then you're making something that you're super stoked with, you're super proud of, and you're you're just in that, you know, that flow state of it. And that's the goal. And with this brush pack, the 2024 one, I, I've been in flow state way more because I'm just able to pick a brush and put down a mark and see what happens. Be like, oh, that's cool. 
oh, that looks neat. Oh yeah, we could do that. Or no, maybe that's not the right one. What, what does this one do? What does this one do? It's like a fun toy box that you dig around in and you're like, what's this? Oh, let's use this. Cool. And you know, you go in and you make it happen. So yeah, I'm, I mean, like I said, I'm biased and sorry, this video is coming off as kind of a shilly thing, but I'm excited about these brushes. I really am. And these are the ones that I'm using. I'm using them right now for uh, Troll Lord games. I'm working on more Gary Gygax stuff. So be on the lookout for that. I'm super thrilled to be part of that process and can't talk about a lot yet, but and there's more stuff coming with Rebel and, you know, um, there, there's a lot of painting things happening. But, you know, with these brushes, I'm able to use these also as kind of an additive. Let's say I start in Rebel. And I start in Art Rage or Paintstorm Studio or something that's a little more wet blend, you know, traditional sort of uh, more realistic painting out of the gate, you know, where, where the native brushes just work and all that stuff. And then I want to go into Photoshop and do a slight touch up. These brushes are kind of great for that. They they are. Um, what was the term I was thinking of? Um you know the people that like repair paintings that that go in and they they, they can strip old varnish and revarnish they might do it like a touch up artist or like a uh, you know a, a curator but there's another word uh, hit me up in the comments if you I I'm drawing a blank to it but yeah there's a, a refurbisher a a um so somebody that does that basically these brushes are really good at that they can blend in well with the more rebel art rage style brushes and not seem out of place but they they have that little bit more pixel by pixel photoshop control than those other more natural media paint programs can be so it, it can also be, this can also be used as a nice touch up it can be used as a nice polisher a finalizer um, really take what you're making in one program and really punch it up Kind of get it to that last go over the finish line you know that this is great for that there's some like zorn sketcher brushes i have some wet brushes that mimic what i think uh john singer sergeant stuff looks like uh but but then there's also some just basic um just flat you know filbert brush type things so there's a lot of cool things going on here uh, some impasto brushes so yeah a lot going on uh, yeah, I just love this painting. I love painting this one. It took me a minute to kind of find out where I wanted to go with it. But, you know, you can never go wrong with big hits of light. Uh, that, that usually goes well. <laughs> Especially if you have a big hit of light and then a dark shadow right next to it. It's a pretty good way to go. Um, so, yeah. Fun stuff, man. New brushes. It's a new year. You know, new year, new you type of thing. But I hope you guys dig this painting. Um, yeah, I wanted to go more of the traditional route this way. And yeah, some big things coming for the channel. Um, like I said, in kind of the New Year's resolution video, we're going to start getting the family more involved, including my wife. And there are some real fun stuff going to come up. Um, I'll just give you a little sneak peek. She is a whiz when it comes to makeup. and Makeup artistry. So, hmm. Hmm, what could we have planned? I don't know. But anyway, that's my time. Uh, go out there and make some cool paintings, man. Uh, let me know what you think of the brushes if you pick them up. Uh, yeah, just a lot of fun, really cool stuff. Yeah, I'll be painting, man. I'm having a blast with these. So <laughs> I'll see you on the canvas. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We appreciate having you around, part of the community. Uh, and go out there, make some cool stuff. Be your best, you. It's after Valentine's Day, but I'm, I'm sending you a digital Valentine to go out there and make some cool art. So we'll see you next time.